Hello there, this is Damil, and today I wanted to share a really cool trick that I found through manga art. And one of the reasons why I'm always so impressed and I'm trying to learn from manga art so much is mainly because they put out so much work in such a short time that before I even open my sketchbook, they finish a whole chapter. That's why I tried to find every Japanese tutorial online and try to translate it to see what I can learn. And one of those things that I learned is apparently they use real life photos for their backgrounds because most of the time artists draw the character, they put the details and then the background gets left behind, <laughs> no pun intended. And I'm gonna go ahead and use an iPad today with Clip Studio Paint X version. Let's just get started. Alrighty, so we have our iPad, a pencil and a mighty glove that went through two civil wars, so it seems. And I already have a picture. This uh, I took when I was on a little hike. There was like an abandoned factory in the middle of nowhere. It was very, very cool. It was just empty and there was graffiti everywhere and I took a bunch of pictures and I highly recommend taking your own references it's really really fun and if you go into info you can actually see this was not a super high resolution picture it was on iPhone SE first generation which is a very quote-unquote old phone by today's standards it, had, it didn't have the best camera so don't feel like you have to have like the best gear to take a nice picture especially for references um, if you don't have a phone, uh, you can still go ahead and just find pictures online or Pinterest. Just make sure that you have the rights to use them if you are going to use it in your manga or alter it enough so that nobody notices it, but I didn't tell you that. But let's go ahead and go into Clips to Paint. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and drop the photo that I have. I'm just going to split screen, hold it. And I'm going to drop the photo right here and it's going to open as a new file. And what we need to do is to adjust it just a little bit in terms of editing into layer duplicate. And in layers, we have two now. I'm going to go ahead and apply a filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And in here, it depends how much you want to use it. We can go ahead and just crank it up and see the difference. What we want is just clear lines for our line art later. So sometimes the details are not as important and it's a pretty busy image to be honest. So we will have to do a lot of cleanup, but honestly, I don't mind it because I like the grunge look in here. And this is where most of the magic will happen. If you go to a layer and go to convert to lines and tones, this is what's gonna help us to create this cool anime effect but if you don't have that button, you most likely have to upgrade Clip Studio Paint. To do that, you can go into the little icon and go to Purchase App Change Grade System. And here, it's going to tell you the following plan. It's going to tell you which one you have. And the X version is what you need for this button. And Pro version is the regular version that I've been using for like a long time. And honestly, sometimes I switch between the two if I don't need the extra feature. So whatever works for you, you can go ahead and get that. And if you go to line converts and tones, you're going to see this cool, cool option. The first thing to click on is obviously preview. And this will give us the result of what we're getting. And it's just a white blank canvas. That's because I don't have anything in here uh, on yet. So uh, first thing to do is process edge detection a one instead of two. And voila, we have our first um, material that we can start working with. And then we also have tone work. This will divide our image into three tones that will help us to achieve this enemy look. And we have the posturization, so allow us to control what part of the images we want to keep in mind when we exporting this. So in here, we can actually remove some of it. So we can even have one or two points and then here you can see we can just move this around and this is going to be like more sensitive that means like this one color will cover everything except the most whitest part so if you go just like all the way down everything's going to be just white so we can start with two points which is my recommendation instead of three just to play around and 
my idea here is the outside the window doesn't really matter because that's not what I'm going for so I'm just gonna go ahead and push it as much as I can so that all of the window is just gonna be empty and this will be edited later too so most of the artistic integrity comes from um, you kind of like quote unquote cleaning up because that's what you can do as an artist you can see which parts are important which parts are not important and I just want to establish a contrast in my image and honestly this doesn't look half bad in my opinion with the tone work so we can turn this off and direction of detection is basically from which direction we're going to look at our lines to extract from and for me in this work it's a little bit too busy so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and what I want is to keep this kind of edge around for the door that's like super important to me and you can see that if I click bottom it removes like most of what I want so I'm gonna keep bottom the right side is important top you can see that it's not important as much so and left is important so this is what I want to keep for now you can also go into the posture as first to get even more control if you click on it you're gonna have three points or two points whatever you have this will also be adjustable and you can move this around to get different uh, amount of emphasis of the specific parts of the image but the best part is you can go into the number and even go into the increase the number to like let's say 100 and that will like completely change how your sensitivity is going to work and you can just start with 25 and in the preview you can see that it is really really important for me uh, for example this part of the beaming light I really like this so much that I want to keep it and when I go into preview it disappears and my first goal would be going to 25 and just finding that beam of light so that I can highlight it better and there we go we can start with this as a base and I really like this and then I can go ahead and remove the other part and add a second point and in here I really like the door maybe a little bit of the back of the trees the floor um, is not as important and I can clean this up later as well. And after messing around with this a little bit, I'm really enjoying this kind of posturized look and we can go ahead and even play a little bit with the line width. If you go into here, click, we can increase the line width to make it more prominent. And it depends on, again, the style you're going for. In my opinion, it's a little bit too thin currently. So I'll go ahead and do two but obviously don't want to overdo it and once I click OK uh, it's gonna process the image and as you can see it added the halftone effect to our entire image and as you can see Clip Studio Paint already divided everything for us so don't have to worry about separating anything and at the very bottom we have white background that we can obviously change to any color we want later then we have a gray wash, then we have a mid-tone, then we have the darkest part of the image, and everything is editable. So if we go into the mask, we can go ahead and just, let's say, use the G-Pen, and we can add this even more if you really need to, like that specific part, like, oh, we want to simplify it. You can go ahead and do that. And then at the top, we have our line work. And in the line work, if I go into 100% opacity, I'll be honest, I'm not too fan of this style. And I can go ahead and just remove that, make a new layer, and just draw on my own, create my own line work on top. And this is what I'm going to do for this image in a bit. And don't forget that we can also adjust these halftones in Clip Studio Paint. If you've never done it, it's pretty easy. Just select whatever you want to edit. And in here, we're going to see the uh, layer property. If you don't see it, go into window layer property. And here, there's going to be many different settings for that, depending on how you want to use it. So, so I'm going to go ahead and separate it. I'm just going to hide everything else. And my favorite part about this is obviously going into the frequency. This will allow us to change like how dense um, the halftone is. If you go into frequency, you can like all the way to like nine. This is going to give you like a really, really <laughs> a thick effect for the frequency. 
and obviously we don't want to overdo this because when it prints it's going to look a little bit different than on the screen because screens are scalable it's gonna uh, you see that if it's small it starts blending in but with, if it's really really close it's gonna be like this but I usually just throw in the frequency for digital work like for 10 or 20 to make it a little bit easier on the eyes and not feeling like too overwhelmed by it so we can go ahead and do that and this is probably the most important part is the cleanup this is where your skill come in of an artist of your taste of your uh, line work and usually i just start out with the half tones i can go into the eraser let's click the mask let's pick the eraser there is going to be soft and this part i don't like that it's darker so i'm gonna go ahead and remove that and selection comes super handy so i'll go in here and i will click polyline click over here click over here and just select this quick part go into the eraser and I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this from here very slowly so that it blends in a little bit better and slowly you know step by step of this whole image will look a little bit more simplified and obviously at the end we want to add a little character after a little bit of time i finally finished the image and i really want to show you what kind of ideas and the process i was going through when i was drawing this and just to go back i can show you my initial drafting ideas so you can zoom in and see that there is some outline for the windows so that it pops a little bit more it creates like a nice silhouette for the entire room and i added one thick one in front so if you really are thinking about creating your own outline or just adjusting the image they already have the first thing that I think about with line is adding a thinner line in the back and as the object gets closer and closer and closer, um, adding a thicker line usually helps a lot to establish this specific object and just have a little bit more emphasis on it. And I really loved this specific door for some reason. It was really nice looking and it gave the room so much more personality. So I was going inside the door and adding uh, details here and there. And in the next image, you can see that I started adding a little bit of character in here because manga and just stories in general, they a lot of times require a character to be present and it doesn't have to be super detailed too. This is just a very simple idea and sketch and the silhouette of a person who has like a sword and obviously they're looking into the distance. What could be cooler than that? And the next part I was looking at is this entire space was not occupied with anything. It was just very, very empty compared to the rest of the image of how busy it is. So I was thinking maybe adding patterns or since I already have the character with a sword, they probably had a fight just now. And so I added uh, a little bit of characters here and there. And I was thinking, how can I make them more realistic and uh, what kind of poses they should be into? And I was going in the Clip Studio Paint 3D. So I put some uh, mannequins around and the 3D models for the characters. I do have a video on how to use um, 3D mannequins in Clip Studio Paint. But a general sketch like this also helps me to kind of place them really quickly in my mind. I added more details and you can't go wrong with bad guys wearing suits for some reason. I don't know why, but I really enjoy black suits when they're fighting. And a broken sword, obviously they won since they're the ones that are the last ones standing. And adding a small panel on the top left was probably my favorite uh, choice in the idea in here is because you can see them uh, smiling a little bit because the main character is facing away from us but at the same time uh, you can see a small cut in their face and you don't know maybe there's more cuts maybe they're uh, they're about to be passing out maybe they won the fight maybe they won it by like a smidge you don't know and that just kind of leaves it up to the mystery and if you notice uh, looking at my previous image and looking at my current image, 
it's a little bit more of a square now. Well, one of the reasons why I did this is because this whole area over here, it did have some really cool graffitis that I wish I kept, but at the same time, it didn't have anything to tell about like the story and the character. And when you have a smaller uh, frame like this, it's a lot easier to read and understand what's happening. I will give my character a bun. I will give my character like a more clear shape. I also removed um, the floor. So this is a lot more white in the new version, as you can see. So it gives more contrast to our character. Uh, our environment blends in better uh, with our image. And just in general, making everything smaller in terms of framing uh, enhances our, like this character became bigger because everything else became smaller. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this technique. If you did, you can uh, like or share this video. Obviously, you don't even have to subscribe to me, which would be nice if you did, but that's not a requirement. But other than that, if you want a more step-by-step -step tutorial with like text, you can go ahead and click the link in the description. I have an article for um, this tutorial, but besides that, I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much and happy painting.